We're wasting time. Okay, all right, who's going to be first? Queenie, go ahead. I, I just want to ask about the road um, entering the East Callis Village, going over the bridge where it's damaged, and what's the plan for over the winter so that we don't end up with that road closing? Oh, no, you're not going to have an answer, but... Yes, the one with the orange. The one with the orange. You know what I'm saying? Right, there's a big hole. Yeah, you know, that, that's a bridge that we're waiting to get grant money for. We probably won't get the grant money until next year, so it's unfortunately probably going to stay just the way it is. I mean, it probably won't stay that way over the winter. Maybe not. We'll do the best we can. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do the best we can. It's, it's a major. Yeah, it's a major. It's a, it's a big fix. They have to go underneath and. I'm not surprised that you're aware. I just like don't know what you know. I'm just worried. No, about of course, it. that's all. But we, just, I'm asking. We have we have, we have a grant. We have applied for. We have applied for a grant, etc. Right. And it will be fixed. But there's been an engineering assessment on it. Scoping assessment. It's safe. It's just yeah. There's one the area that right. can't go wrong. Okay. All right. Yeah. Who's that? Who's that? I'll go. Okay. Um, so I, uh, it, it, I'm just still remain really concerned that we have no treasurer. I remember when I was at the no, meeting, no, no, no. treasurer, oh. when I was at the meeting in August, and Jeremy stood here and said they were totally overwhelmed and stressed and overworked. Or maybe that was in July, and he said, and when tax season does come, we don't get a treasurer. It's going to be just impossible. Well, tax season has come and gone, and still there's no treasurer. And I know there's a lot of disquiet and unsettledness on the personnel front in general. And this is how can how can we function without a treasurer? What are Jeremy and Barbara supposed to do? It's not even their job. Come to the tax payments in November. So, quick response to that. Um, Jeremy and Barbara are not alone um, in in covering that. In fact, the bulk of covering the treasurer responsibilities is Denise, um, in partnership with Nemwork, which is our municipal accounting and support firm. Uh, that's one piece of the answer. The other thing is we um, continue to advertise. So you may or may not have seen those advertisements. I can assure you that we have continued to advertise one. No, well, it's out there. It's out there again. It's out there again. It'll be out there again in two weeks. Um, we're, you know, we're on a schedule for advertising a position. We got to, I think, over the weekend.
to under the tax checks, I was going to learn how to do that. <coughs> they decided that my time would be better spent on other functions. So if you know somebody, sometimes word of mouth is the best way to get somebody. Somebody that somebody knows. If you know somebody, please spread the word. We want a treasure. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, we're done. I don't I mean I hope I can't imagine you think anybody thinks that, but please consider, you know, what do we gain by not having one? I mean we're not we're, you're doing everything you do as a volunteer. Yeah, you're doing everything you do as a volunteer. No, it just seems like I'm, I'm just be such a top, top, top <coughs> priority. Well, it is a top priority along with all the other along with all the other top priorities. Along with all the other top priorities. You know, it depends on you know where you're at as right. to what you see as the priority. All right, <laughs> we got it. We got it. We really have to. Respond. Who's next? Um, I'm, okay. We're going to use our whole hour if we so, if we, so. Um, Who's next? Yeah, I'll, just, I'll be very brief. Yeah. Okay. So many questions. Um, I made a point of going through and rereading all of the notes from October 2021, no, August 2021, who now? Um, what, as a person who lives in this town, I have some concern that you all might think that you're sharing things with the public that are actually happening in executive session. and than being bothered that the citizens are saying we don't, where did this come from? So th there's like literally three mentions over from March, the first meeting in March, a mention of creating a public works director May 2nd, that it was gonna be developed, and then it was developed in a vacuum with nothing else being put out, you know, things like that, but since I need to be quick. Um, with employment, it's really important we keep the employees that we have. And we currently have three group crew members, correct, to my knowledge, and a part-time person. Um, and we need to do right by them. I have some concerns. I have read, and clearly you have a very strong knowledge and background in roads, and I appreciate that. I'm still concerned with you being Acting as a road commissioner because it is a conflict, at least according to the bond league of cities. No, no, that's, that's actually, actually not. That's yeah, true. I'm glad you mentioned that okay. again. No, that it, it actually. That's a handout on the website, but no, 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 okay. it's not. It, that the I want to. I'm sorry. I just want to be really clear about it. I think I brought the statute. Yeah, the statute in fact says that it, it it's be. very common that a select board member might be serving as a road commissioner. And Anna, I encourage you to look at that. You were looking maybe at a grid on the Mount League of Cities and Towns. Um, there is one that they post of incompatible offices, and, and I almost wonder if like you, if you, if you like misalign the lines, because I went out and looked at it when I saw your post, but no, it is not incompatible. It is not an incompatible office between road commissioner and select board. In fact, the statute specifically yeah. said I, went, I, went, statute I, went, I went and looked for the statute yeah. and I brought it home. John has I, I don't have it. Oh, you don't have it. Right. She's um, it. Anyway, so, so, so I am. No, it's, yeah. it's not it's incompatible. Not, that's not correct. It's not incompatible. Okay. It isn't. But with such strains. But I hear your other concerns. But wanting them to, you know, yeah. sign off on, like, the road standards, which is still unclear if that's just that they know they exist or that they agree with them. It's not, it's not to see if they agree with them, it's it was simply to ask them okay. to sign a letter, just like I used to do with the state government, saying I have been trained in sexual harassment or mm -hmm. any of those things, just to say that I had received the documents, I've read, read them, train. Yeah, I've read them, okay. I don't agree with them, but I read them. Well, no, I understand. I haven't seen the documents, so I don't know what they say. Yeah, I don't know what their apprehensions yeah. are. But and we are working on, I mentioned this at our last meeting, we are working um, on a timeline for the road standards, so uh, that will be worn at a, at a future agenda. That's not, the road standards are not new. They've been out there, they were adopted by folks, they were blacklisted by the school yeah. board, developed by a group of citizens. 2014. And, 2014. And all we wanted was to be sure that um, the road crew was actually aware of them and had been trained on them and understood that these are the road standards in Calgary. That's what we asked for. And I've been doing some research. So I've been doing some research, research on the timeline for the road standards. And actually, the DPW position was mentioned back in 2014 or 15. That's how long ago this has been talked about. 
not that we talked about it all the time in the genome, but yeah, it's not. I, mean, I, just, I, was, I said, oh, wow, I forgot to talk about it way back then. Yeah. Okay, but that's, yes, I didn't, that would take more time than I had this afternoon. Right. But, so, so thank you. Okay. Is there anything, any other well, no, just, points? Just quickly that the 29th on Alfred's last day, it felt needlessly antagonistic how kind of his last day. Were you were you there? What? Were you were you there, Anne? I wasn't physically there. I gave directions to Fellows Road because they didn't have internet access and they're driving a dump truck to change the stuff. I wasn't there either. So if people have contacted me about that day, I've encouraged folks to remember I wasn't there. Um, nobody I've heard from was actually there. And so I don't want to get into today. There's only, there's only one person here who was actually there. And I don't want to open us up. I do want to speak to that, though. There was a question asked by one of our road crew members. Did you turn the internet off? And I don't even know where the internet is in that garage. I did not turn the internet off. I was the select board member that collected not the keys, which was misrepresented on front porch form, and then amplified by other people who weren't there, um, based on hearsay. Um, there, was only, there were only two people there, Alfred and I, in that garage. And I, oh, Gail, he wasn't? That's true. Toby was in the garage, and I was in the process of asking Alfred for his laptop and his cell phone. And we had a conversation, and Toby started interjecting. Now, Toby is not an employee of the town, um, so I asked him to wait outside of the garage until I was done, and Alfred would meet him outside when he was done, which should should have been and was about five to ten minutes. And that's simply. And Alfred gave me the passwords to the laptop, the passwords to the cell phone, and that was it. I don't know where to. And we found out the next week that the Wi-Fi, everything was hooked up, all the lights were on, and I did a reset, and it worked when I reset it on Monday. So, so nobody was kicked out, residents were not kicked out, a bunch of residents gathered to wish Alfred well. I drove away with the cell phone and the laptop, and Gail is shaking her head, and you know, Gail, I wanna let you know something else, I had it tape recorded, so because of this kind of stuff, I recorded everything, so. I'm protected. Okay. So, okay, so so can, no, you, you can move on, but I just, I want to recognize that you have the power to sit there at this table and be able to provide your side of this story, but the people that were there may not have that because you oversee them. Does well, that make sense? Well, that's, and that's, that's exactly why I really don't want to get into, you know, like he said, she said right now, John's the only person who is there. It's all on here. And, but and we have other things we need to do. Thank God. So thank thank you. you. And, and I, we heard that your concern that we treat the road crew well, and we agree completely. For I've been here two years almost. It was somewhat fraught at times. It was not our intention to replace him. It was not our intention that he leave the job. We thought it would be an improvement for him. He disagreed, which is his right. He resigned. But I hear what you're saying. OK, we really need to thank you, folks. Uh, Gail, I think you are the last one. I have a good question. Will you be posting the minutes from the meeting that you had last Wednesday evening? Yes. Well, what was Wednesday evening? That was the Wednesday evening was, was that? No, that was not the, it was Wednesday evening. Did we meet last Wednesday? No, we did not meet. We did not meet. There, I'm sorry. There was no meeting. There was no meeting, meeting last Wednesday. That's very interesting. Why is that interesting? Because many of us know that you were all at the town office. Plus, you reserved the, oh, that was the town office. Yes, I know what you're talking about. That was not anything to do with this matter. Yep. Totally separate, different legal matter, and it was not, nothing to do with this. It was not. It was yes. It was was not, I can tell you as well. Now not, I can tell the folks so that you know. There was not a quorum we, of the board. We have an enforcement case going regarding the horses, for those who have been paying attention, following along, and we have a number of witnesses 
that are going to be participants, residents, your fellows, residents, and neighbors, um, who have some some are concerned about their own health and well-being, uh, but they've nevertheless been willing to participate in the hearing as witnesses to what has gone on for five or six years in the Collar Hill neighborhood. And we had our town attorney schedule a meeting to interview the witnesses and prepare them for the trial, which is in November. November 3rd. So that was not something we wanted a bunch of town residents outside um, banging on the door. We needed these people to be able to focus and, and express what they were going to testify. Do you understand what my question is? So, so tell yes. There was no meeting of the select board. No I made it clear to Barbara and Jeremy. Hang on, but let's, Gail, you asked specifically whether there are minutes, and, and the answer is no. And let me say what John said in another way. It was not a meeting of the select board, point number one. Point number two, they were gathering testimony for a legal proceeding. And so, so that's entirely unrelated to the other things we've been talking about tonight. So there, it's, it's not of a nature that there would be minutes. It's inappropriate for any of that to be published for the public to, you know, read, enjoy, whatever. It's testimony related to a legal proceeding that John said relates to the horse issue we've been handling. Right? And, and there was not a quorum of the select board there intentionally because it wasn't intended to be a select board meeting. It there are two select board members that will be witnesses in the case, Denise and I, and that's why they were, we were present. Yeah. Does that, that should respond to your question. And this was about whether there will be minutes and, and, and then also what And this was made clear to Barbara and Jeremy up front. So I, I don't know where the hearsay keeps coming from here. So yeah, there were a bunch of people here, but it wasn't a meeting, it was, so, it was so, that. So, so that you understand there's more going on with meetings than rows. There's the, the legal issues. There's when we interview Candidate. potential candidates for positions. Those are done all in executive session. If you were a candidate for a position, and I, in my job, you didn't interview people in public. Mm -hmm. It was considered confidential because what if that employer finds out mm -hmm. they're applying for a position mm -hmm. and you don't really want them to know yet that you've applied for a different job, that's why we do it in executive session because it's confidential for people to feel comfortable coming to an interview. And, and similarly with testimony for a legal proceeding, that's not something anybody coming forward would want to be documented. And, right. and this was and this was ordered by our attorney. This is how I think if you were more open with us. And we are us, and you are you, and that's the way it's set up right now, and that's not good. No, I agree. That's with you. not good. So, so I consulted with our. We do not have a good relationship. I, I this sucks. I, this sucks. Excuse me, John. Well, I just want to. You want man playing the mother talk, John? Here. Oh, excuse me, Marilyn. So yeah. now you're attacking yeah, me. Yeah, no, this is okay. okay. This, not, this is very hard. Stop. No, if you no, don't no, stop no, interrupting, we're done. We're done. This is done. Everybody who wanted to speak and raise an issue has, and this is deteriorating quickly, and we have other business we have to do. We have gone on 10 minutes longer than we intended to. I thank you all very much for showing up. We have other things we have to do tonight, and I'm sorry I'm going to have to cut us off for a well, public can we schedule a meeting where we can talk about We will, we will continue. Marilyn, we have we have our regular meetings are twice a month, if not more frequently, in the special meeting or, or whatever. Every time we warrant a meeting, we have a period of public comment. I invite you this to come is back public again. Comment. And it's cut off. It's cut off right now. You just cut it off. Yes, I That's, did. Yes, I did. That means and you are not respecting that. So we, are, we are no, we're done. We're done. This is done. See, we're done. Thank we're you very much. Yeah. We have other things we have other. have to get done tonight and so I appreciate you're all here and thank you for your comments. We will we'll, we'll discuss you're welcome to, you're welcome to stay as we carry on. Okay so thank you everybody for being here and coming back in. Um, now it's marking uh, I want to uh,
you so we, we're not going to make a motion to come out of the executive. Yeah, so we, we came out, we're doing it formally. Is there, Mark, we're seconding it. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So we are now out of executive session. One of the things that we are going to do is make sure when we come out of executive session, we have everybody come back in so you're all here when we announce what work we did in the executive session. Um, previously, we would you know, add that to the minutes because there's nobody here, so we're changing how the our process is. So I want to um, announce that the board had, is accepting Eric Oberlin's resignation as public works director. Um, we will be reposting for the public works director position immediately. And in the meantime, at our last meeting, or meeting two meetings ago, we uh, appointed Rick Keene as acting road commissioner. Rick will continue as acting road commissioner for specific purpose of handling citizens' communications. So often people have a question. There was a question earlier about the, the road in East Callis. So that's the sort of issue that Rick will be available for phone calls, questions about citizen communication. Uh, at the same time, we uh, I will accept a motion to appoint Eric Oberlin also as an acting road commissioner. We're, we are allowed to have two. John's going to speak to that in a second. We are appointing Eric Oberlin as acting road commissioner for purposes of crew oversight and leadership. So making clear that the, road, the highway crew will report to Eric in his role as acting road commissioner. Uh, is there a motion on this point? Second. And a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, John's going to share, well, John uh, multitask and found the statute we mentioned earlier. Somebody asked a question about how, about the, um, whether it's a conflict for the board, the select board person to be a road commissioner. We said it's not. We have the statute. And that also speaks to having more than one road commissioner. John, you want to share that? So, uh, under the Vermont statutes, Title 17, which speaks to local elections, um, subchapter 2, town meetings and local elections in general, section 2651, uh, parent A, um, the select board shall appoint forthwith one or two road commissioners and the select board may appoint one or two members of their own board to serve as road commissioners. So that's state law. And so what we are electing to do is appoint a select board member, Rick, to act in a capacity as a road commissioner, and Eric um, as an acting road commissioner until we can kind of regroup and get things back on a better plane since Eric has resigned from the DPW spot. So we will be, um, Eric, both Rick and Eric are volunteers. Uh, we will be pulling together and inviting anybody who would like to apply for um, a road, an acting or a road commissioner uh, role around crew oversight on a part-time stipend type of basis to apply, but uh, for now, Eric is, is serving in that role as a volunteer. I want to also be clear. And, and did, did we also say we were going to be posting for DPW? Yeah, we did. Yes. Yeah. Well. Yes. Eric, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Eric, thank you. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, Eric, now I invite you to step forward and join us to provide uh, an update. Thank you. We had a very productive week. First, let me just say that <clears throat> It's, it's a little difficult, but the reason I had to make this resignation is I was offered a more substantial role with the state of Vermont. And it's a role that's more in line with my professional background. So I felt compelled to take that offer. But I'm still very much committed to the town. We've done some very good work this last week or two and uh, spent a lot of time getting things repaired and ordered, people trained. Um, and I'm going to go through a list of things that we accomplished here this last week. 
But it's all been positive, and I feel very good about the crew and where they're at. Good crew. Mm -hmm. So on that note, um, and one new hire. Hmm? And one new hire. And That's hire. right. So the good news is we uh, found a new hire this week. Uh, his name is Ogden Hershey, and he'll be starting on the 17th. Uh, he does not have a CDL license, but he is going to be the guy that is going to be able to drive a one ton, so he'll be able to pick up a, a plow route. And so I think that's a pretty valuable addition to the department at this time, considering just how difficult it is to find help. All the towns are scrambling to find uh, road crews. So I view this as a very positive development. <coughs> Uh, in this past week, we had a service technician come out, and we had the uh, Caterpillar front end loader repaired, and it's now operational. Uh, the service technician also did some work on the road grader, the Caterpillar road grader. Uh, it was damaged during operations, but now it's been repaired and operational. Uh, one of the Western Star 10 wheelers, uh, we made an appointment for it to go into uh, have some brake work and an inspection done. That's going to be happening actually just in a few days from now. Uh, we recovered another Western Star 10 wheeler uh, from Charlotte Boys. Uh, it had some electrical work. We brought that back to the garage. We've sent another truck into Charlotte Boys to have some uh, transmission lines replaced. Uh, we expect that to be done in the next seven to 10 days. <coughs> Uh, we have started the process for confirming our, our new salt delivery contract with Cargill. Uh, we're just waiting for the quote to come back, but this will be this will lock in our 200 tons of white salt that we will have delivered in the next six to nine months. We also had a visit from the Jordan Equipment Rep. We came to survey all the town's plow equipment and uh, We've opted to buy some HD Sabre carbides for the 10-wheeler plows, <clears throat> as well as uh, many needed wing shoes and plow shoes. And we're going to take delivery of all that plow equipment before the end of October. Uh, we did order new tire chains for all the 10-wheelers, uh, and they actually arrived this last week, which is a good thing. Uh, I have been working closely with Peter and Tyler because uh, they're very experienced. And, and ultimately, I think they can be developed into a lead foreman role. I feel very good about that. Uh, we did some, I did some site surveys with CV Fiber uh, because they're going to be doing some work this month installing fiber optics close to the roads. Uh, we surveyed eight sites. And uh, that permit is done, and that work should be starting any time. <clears throat> uh, other than that, the John Deere Road Grader is operational. The International CV Six Wheeler is operational. Same for the chloride tank and pump, as well as the hydro seeder. And that is kind of a uh, that's kind of a broad overview. I we have a, a couple. I had a question. Yes. Which I, I just didn't understand. Them. So. The, the new Western Star 10 wheeler. Yes. That's to be delivered, right? In November sometime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought first it was delayed. Pardon? Oh, no, that's the X. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what I wanted to understand. No, so there's a new 10 wheeler that is to be delivered from Charm Boys uh, early November, and then it has to be sent to the outfitters at Viking to get the dump body installed. Uh -huh. uh, and we are training in our CV6 wheeler uh, at the time. I'm uh, hoping to get about $59,000 in trading credit for that. Uh, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons this truck is being traded in is it's highly susceptible to corrosion issues. <coughs> Too much money was spent um, mitigating that last year, and the F600 is a superior truck. Okay. Uh, and we are ordering a new F600, and, um, but it's been delayed. Originally, it was supposed to be delivered uh, maybe November, December. <coughs> Uh, Ford made a, they changed their delivery schedule for municipal uh, <clears throat> trucks like that. And so now we're looking at a delivery of more like spring 2023 for the F600. Is that the one time? That's the one. Yes. So, so that's, that's going to replace the international, the international right? That we're that's trading. right, the international. So, so we're going to be sure a truck will continue to use the international. Right. We're going to make a Ford yeah. becomes available. There, we'll make an arrangement with them so that we have maximum use of the CV. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I mean, this is, this report is amazing. 
This last one. This is one week. The, the most information we have probably ever gotten about how things are going in the town garage and what needs to be done and what, you know, so that we under, because if we don't understand, we need to understand what's going on at the garage so we need to continue to be supportive. I, I think in the, in the best case world that there should be a weekly sort of status on all the equipment in the garage because, I mean, we're looking at, you know, $1.7 million worth of equipment in there. Right. And this is all stuff that hadn't been done. A lot of deferred maintenance here. Deferred maintenance, and, and do we know um, why? So, it's, but things break quickly too, so you always right. have to stay on top of that. Right. Last winter, we ran into this, we were in the Chateau Lisa, myself, we were in the Chateau in the garage, and we found, you know, two of the trucks were driving on expired registrations that were expired by once. Well, they were, they were so expired, they were expired inspections. Inspired, right. and they were, but those were, <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, yeah, and they were, which puts our drivers. Well, and then we had insurance liability. And as soon as we found out about that, we were absolutely clear as a board that that was unacceptable and we weren't going to drive uninspected. Yeah, it just happened that we were there and I noticed the inspection stickers and asked about it and was told, well, we haven't had time. Yes. But our insurance carrier, if we have an accident with a truck that's not inspected, yeah. our it's, insurance is not going to. It's cover. super important. <laughs> and, and they're aware of that. But it's also, I think it's a good idea to just keep tasking that. Like, are we right. good on our inspections? Right. And be efficient, too. It's not just going to get the inspection, but go and have some great work. And, Do it all at the same time. Yeah, so you're not, the truck's not offline for you know a week. And it's very difficult right now. All the, you go to Charlotte Bores or any of these service places, they have tons of trucks just lying around waiting for service. Same old problem, you know, supply chain, not enough parts, not enough people. So you need to be on top of your game. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, and that's my thinking ahead and planning ahead is going to be really critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eric, thank you for bringing that. Yeah, bringing that. Yeah. well done. I, I do Both the thorough report and, and the, the planning and the foresight. We really appreciate it. Um, when I was at the garage, when it will be two weeks this Thursday, I noticed that one of the, the large trucks, um, the, the dually, dual axle trucks, rear axle trucks, um, the registration sticker was out of date on the plate. Um, so I don't, I spoke with Alfred about that. He said that they didn't send a sticker. Ah, so, okay. But it would be good to confirm that that is currently registered and to get a sticker on there. That's a good point. Okay. I wonder if you can register those kind of trucks online like in your car. Could you, would you be willing to provide this sort of a report as part of your road commissioner work in some way? I think so. I think there's something we can do, yes. Okay. I mean, even if it was bi-weekly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Bi-weekly, yes. Yeah, that, that because some of these are heavy hitters. Yeah. Um, they're, right. You know, a lot of times, ideally, they're just focusing on maintenance. Right. Not fixing things all the time. Well, also, I think every other week is fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, for our maintenance, because how much is going to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. So, I mean, ideally, as we're moving into winter, uh, you know, everything's working. We've already ordered all the essentials. Um, we got sand, we got salt, we got plow equipment, so it should be just operating. Right. And uh, with the occasional, you know, outage. Yeah, things break. They have to, they have to change the chains because they wear out. That's right. Because I've been in the garage when they're replacing we those chains. There. And we ordered, we've yeah. ordered more, so we're, we're looking good in that category, too. Yeah. Yeah, now they're, I think they're probably fitting up the plow frames and things at this point, right? Getting the yeah, this week, this is going to be, yeah. yep. it's going to be about that. That survey that we have is very helpful, so we'll start putting things together. So, so next week, um, next week we um, we are. This is not actually a regular meeting, although it's a regular meeting night. Tonight we are meeting. We have uh, the, the curb cut that we're going to do in a second, and then after then we're adjourning for this meeting, and we are. Um, Continuing, Mark will take this seat. We will continue the Town Highway Seven. We have a regular because to, because we just we get we um, got ourselves confused on our calendars. So we are we all <laughs> we don't need to take blame with all the balls in the air, but uh, we're labeling. But we um, we have a regular select board meeting next week instead of uh, the 17th instead of tonight mm -hmm. and then again on the 24th because that would be two well, weeks from tonight we meet the second monday which is tonight and then the fourth monday which is the 
So the property is in land use, so if there ever was a need to do any forestry stuff or agriculture stuff, then that would be the site I would have to access it from as well. So that was another reason why I wanted to keep that. Um, so I talked to the forestry consultant that we use, and he said... And then did you move the location of the house, which now necessitates the need to... Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, originally we were thinking of doing it on the side where the driveway is, but due to the septic design, and just like you were saying, profile of the land, this is sold a bit, it made more sense to move it to the other side. And again, I was, I don't know if you missed that, but the septic design really kind of pushed us to move over to that side once we got in there and started looking at the state requirements. Okay. It made these things perfect so, sense. Yeah. Looking at the, the walk that side, I mean, it made, it, uh, yeah, I mean, it actually. Is this the current one or the new one? This is looking from the point of the driver coming right here. And this is the regular state off of the main right in front of the 30 feet, 50 feet, something, and down to this. And that site, the house will be here beyond. There is a sag down beyond the house. And that is down Correct, and that's also and where the culvert is. This the the other road, drive. Is this the road? Or no, this is actually the neighbors gave them access. Of the oh, so it's not. Drive. It's not that you're going to have a the two the two different curb cuts don't connect. Correct. Right. So right. And the other thing is is so because it's in land use, there's yeah. two different two acre home sites sites, okay. sites like designated yeah. sites. So it's basically accessing both of those. Okay. So, this, there's a so the engineers have done a really good job of showing what's there and what's intended to happen on this site. It's a shared septic system for this one and perhaps something at a later date. But what the engineers don't show 
which is really important, is that there's a major culvert to the town down here that brings all the drainage from here down through, and that's why it's so wet. Yeah. This is a cross. You can't road. traverse up through here wow. with anything. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's the unique part. Well, it works for us in the way that it, it makes the drainage easy on the road itself. You know, for our from our perspective. It's so so. Thank you for explaining yeah. the the necessity for the second. Yeah. Um, the and so are there yeah. Rick, what Rick, are there some conditions? Uh, I saw no no conditions on that at all because there essentially isn't a culvert. They, they don't really call it? No, no, they won't on this. It's, uh, we're, we're putting one in, just to be clear. Just well, you're going to be putting it on. The plan shows it, but it's not. It's not at the road. It's uh, down. It is. Uh, it's on another page. But it's down. It's down in here. It's down here. It's out of the. It's down here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. here's the cut. It's down here. It's out of the right of way. Yes, this, it is. This is all. Water is all flowing this way. Yeah, that's correct. Right. So see, that's on their land. But, but as far as the permit goes. We're not requiring any kind of a culvert. No, that's just the B seventy one standard for the drives. I mean, we want to make sure that's met. Uh, there, you will need a culvert under in the right of way. On this. Right. Okay, so it meets the B seventy one standard. There's no ditch essentially. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean that's really the only the only standard we have. There's got beautiful sight lines. Okay, so both directions, yeah. yeah. There's two football fields in both directions. Yeah, yeah. I've okay. got photographs of it if you want. So, Denise, so that'll be, so Denise is capturing that. And, that, and those points, of course, are in, implicit in the fact that we're approving it without conditions, that it meets the standards. So right. I think I'm ready to ask if there is a motion to approve um, on Rick's recommendation with no conditions. So move it. John, thank you, motion. Sorry. Uh, any other discussion or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And the need to circulate for us to sign. Okay. Awesome. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Just one final question. Will you, will you sign that tonight? Sign tonight. Sign tonight. Okay, so we can start tomorrow. Yes. 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 Yeah. You're great. Thank you all very much. Yes. Thank you. We'll thank you. send you the, a copy and then we'll give it to the town office because it has to get recorded in the library. Of course. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank, thank you all. Good night. Thank you guys. Thank you. Um, are is is there a um, want a motion to adjourn? I think yeah, we so and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.